All right, so we are at Starship 6. The This is going to go up tomorrow. Um, and we have Ellie in space here who literally covers this. Full time. Uh, full time. I quit my job <laughs> and I bet it all on SpaceX. It's so this is like your Super Bowl. This is my Super Bowl, yes. So <laughs> I've been here for every single launch of Starship minus the last one, which happened to be, I don't know, the best one because <laughs> they, for the first time ever, caught a booster in those chopsticks that you yeah. see, they aced it on the first try. Yeah. So tomorrow we are likely going to see that. Um, there are some conditions that have to be met, but I think if they were to ace, ace it on the first attempt, they're going to get it tomorrow. What is different about this launch? And I think we previously talked about this, but what are you expecting tomorrow versus the fifth one? Yeah, so the, the main thing is it's going to be an afternoon launch for the first time. So I'm so used to having to get up at 5 a.m. for my live stream and they have changed it to 4 p.m. local time. And that is actually more having to do with the ship's reentry in the Indian Ocean. Oh. They're trying some new things. They're putting less heat tiles on it. So they want to make sure that thing can hold up. And it, in order to make sure it can, they need better visual observation, which is why, hence, being in the daylight is going to be a lot better than when it's, you know, early in the morning. So that's the first thing is we finally have an yeah. afternoon launch, which yeah. is good. It's exciting. For a lot of us that yeah. don't want to get up super early. <laughs> At 5 a.m. And I will say this is the most crowded I've seen it since the first launch of Starship. So I think having that booster catch has made this a global sensation. We have people from China, New Zealand, Australia, wow. South Africa. It's really a global. I mean, space just brings so many people together. Yes. Uh, what do you? What is the importance of being able to have reusable rockets? Like, why is it so important that they're able to catch this for a second time? So... What if we didn't have reusable planes? I mean, the answer is pretty simple. It's going to lower the cost of access to space. And that's really the only way, Elon says it all the time, that we're going to become a spacefaring civilization. Yeah. So the biggest thing is cost. We're able to send much more payload to space because I don't know if you've noticed how big that thing is behind you, yeah. but Starship is really revolutionary. It is going to make the Falcon 9, which is SpaceX's, you know, workhorse rocket obsolete eventually. Yep. We're not quite there yet, yep. but getting full and rapid reusability is the holy grail of rocketry. Yep. You've, you've heard Elon said it, <laughs> but it is the truth. And so um, the other thing that is going to be unique tomorrow, they're going to try to relight a single Raptor engine in space. So they're wow. doing a couple new things, but the profile is largely similar yep. to the last flight. Now, Flight 7 is going to be different because they're going to be retiring this V1 of Starship version oh, 1. No way. And they're going yeah. to be debuting the new version of ship V2. So that's Has something. anyone seen V2 yet? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, All yeah. Right. <laughs> There's, I mean, there are people that watch this place like a hawk from above, from the ground. People m drop everything and move here. They live here. They track the micromanagements of Starbase or micro movements. I don't do that. I try to interview interesting people. But um, there's just this cottage industry around yeah. what SpaceX is doing. And yeah. so, yes. How have things changed in the past two weeks? Uh, especially now they announced uh, Brennan Carr as yes. the new FCC, FCC chairman. FCC, which is more for Starlink. Yep. Listen, we need some overhaul at the FAA, the yeah. other F organization. <laughs> but I think with Trump, you know, a Trump transition into office, uh, we're going to see that. And. You know, we did see a, a very unique turnaround that we weren't expecting in October when we had that launch. The FAA had stated that they were going to give SpaceX the license for Flight 5 in late November. We're still not in late November, wow, and we're yeah. already a little over a month going to have the second launch. So I think there was a lot of pressure behind the scenes for the FAA to expedite that launch license because... Granted, it was supposed to be back in August. So yep. I think with Trump being in office, we're going to see uh, hopefully some better efficiency at the FAA. We're going to see more launches because yeah. how what a shame it would be if yeah. paperwork is the only thing that's holding us back. They can yeah. build a rocket faster than they can move around some paperwork. Yeah. Well, I mean, especially with the the uh, innovation pace that's happening at SpaceX. I mean, they're rapid literally iteration. rapid iteration. I mean, even at Tesla, right? It's one of those things where they may be deleting pieces off of the actual vehicle, and yet the <laughs> the production line at the very end doesn't even know. Um, but how would you say what's the vibe like here? I mean, you said it's for this similar. Launch? Yes, for this launch. I mean, especially off the election. I mean, I feel like everyone's just you know, it's just it's a different atmosphere. I think that. The successful catch of the booster had the naysayers, you know, eating their own words and saying, wait a second, SpaceX is actually successful. And 
that was actually a remarkable feat of yeah. human engineering. And yep. so I think that since having that catch, there's an even larger interest in Starship and people want to see this because you can't see that anywhere else. Sure, we have some Falcon 9 boosters landing on drone ships or landing on land on occasion from Falcon Heavy, but no one else, no other company has ever done this, no organization. Yeah. This this was thought to be impossible. Yep. And I've met people in the space industry that are very knowledgeable that really thought that this was just not going to be possible. Yeah. The thing was going to blow up. The tower was going to get destroyed. <laughs> you heard Trump yeah. say it. It hugged it like a baby in the gantry. And it held it. And just like you hold your baby at night, your little baby. Yeah, I mean, they aced it on the first yeah. try. So I think it's it's one thing to see a launch and everyone should see a launch in their lifetime. Yes. And this thing is so large. Oh, my God, yeah. a giant rocket. But to see it come back yeah, precisely in yep. a tower with these small arms is, well, I haven't seen it yet in person, yeah. but I've watched the video a hundred yeah. times. Yeah, well, thank you, Ellie, for your time today. So you've heard it from her, again, someone who covers this every day. Uh, we're going to tag her and also put a link to her channel. Uh, she's actually going to be doing a live stream of this tomorrow as well. So tune into her channel for some amazing commentary from also Joe as well. Joe Tegmeyer is my co-host. So it's going to be, they do such an amazing job. So thank you again, Ellie, for being such a big supporter of our organization. And thank you again. All the best tomorrow. Yeah, I'm a new affiliate. So <laughs> yeah. Go, yeah, let's congrats go. Congrats on a million. Congra let's do that right. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs>